the next speaker is dr pc manoria and i request dr spandan bhaduri to be uh, be taking up the issues dr pc manoria did not have any introduction he is speaking on hepatitis in presence of cardio renal metabolic continuum dr manoria please slides are visible yeah yes sir yes sir perfect uh, are you able to hear yes, okay, okay. So good evening, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this wonderful conference. So for the next ten minutes, I'll be talking on is DAPA glucosin a panacea for cardiorenal metabolic continuum? All of us know cardiorenal metabolic continuum is commonly seen in diabetic patients, but is also seen in non-diabetic patients. So in diabetic patients, there is often a close cross connect between diabetes and heart failure, heart failure and CKD, diabetes and NFLD, and obesity and diabetes. All of us know diabetes commonly results in heart failure. Patients with heart failure are at increased risk of diabetes. Worsening heart failure, worsening kidney failure and worsening kidney failure worsens heart failure and type 2 diabetes produces nfld and nfld predisposes to type 2 diabetes and obesity is a very important determinant of insulin resistance and diabetes interestingly sglt2 inhibitors target all the three components of the cardio renal metabolic continuum as i'll show you so what are the benefits in the metabolic component of the cardio renal metabolic continuum sglt2 inhibitors particularly dapa reduces hba1c decreases glucotoxicity reduces weight reduces visceral fat increases insulin sensitivity decreases blood pressure and this is achieved with minimal or no hypoglycemia and interestingly they also decrease new onset diabetes now this shows that the hba1c with dapa glucosin is decrease from 0.84 to 1.32 and this is achieved whether you use uh, dapagliflozin as a monotherapy or as an add-on therapy on any other anti diabetic medication the weight is also reduced from 1 kg to 3.4 kg and there's also reduction in the visceral fat and blood pressure is also reduced by 3 to 4 mm and this benefit is maintained for 4 years whether you are talking of a hba1c reduction or you are talking of a body weight reduction or you are talking of blood pressure reduction and this is achieved with minimal or no hypoglycemia and interestingly the dapa hf trial as you can see showed a 32% reduction in the new onset diabetes what is its benefit in the cardio renal spectrum this will be talking on the dapa declare trial which was for prevention of heart failure dapa h for management of hf and dapa ckd for management of ckd now in heart failure sglt2 inhibitors are a panacea they decrease hospitalization for heart failure in cv outcome trials they improve heart failure outcome in hep rep patients and they decrease hospitalization for heart failure cv mortality all cause mortality and also improve the quality of life trials in hep rep are ongoing the deliver and the emperor preserve this is the landmark uh, declare trial 17000 patient dapa hf dapa was compared 10 mg uh, with uh, the standard of care and uh, 60% patients had only risk factors while 40% patients had acvd the primary endpoint hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death a statistically significant reduction of uh, 17% and in the atherosclerotic maze there was no significant reduction decreasing hospitalization for heart failure is a great achievement in the treatment of heart failure because every hospitalization every rehospitalization takes the patient closer to death and this is the subgroup analysis of post mi patients uh, which shows that uh, there was a 16% reduction in the maze and dapa produce benefit whether you have a history of heart failure and irrespective of the ejection fraction the mechanism all of us are familiar it acts in diverse ways and is approved and available in several countries around the world 
And this is the DAPA HF trial. All of us are aware of it. Here, DAPA 10 milligram was uh, compared to standard of care placebo. And uh, the trial was prematurely terminated because of men's benefit. 45% were diabetic, 55% were uh, non diabetic. And there was a 26% reduction in the composite of cardiovascular death and worsening heart failure. Cardiovascular death was reduced by 18%, hospitalization for heart failure by 13%, all cause mortality by 19%, and the benefits were achieved within a month. And the drug was very well tolerated. Uh, there was uh, optimized background standard therapy. It was tested in all subset of patients, as you can see on the slide. And the first big message from DAPIJ was that the drug was effective in non-diabetic patients. Whether you are diabetic or non-diabetic, the benefit is the same, there's a 25% reduction. The second big message was, it was effective even on top of RNA, and again, you can see the benefit is the same, whether RNA or not, 25% reduction or 26%. And the third big message which needs further investigation is, DAPA-HF has shown that dapa glufosin can postpone device therapy with the results we have obtained. The quality of life was improved. Side effects are minimal, it's very well tolerated. And the benefit in DAPA HF was seen across the entire EGFR spectrum. Now, this is the sequencing, which was partly discussed in the earlier lecture. The conventional switching we do not uh, practice because it takes a long time. Uh, this is the switching which is proposed by McMurray and uh, Dr. Packer, in which SGLT2 and beta blockers are. Uh, preferential agents and followed by RNA and MRA, but the ACC consensus uh, recommends uh, RNA as a preferential initiator. But what is more important is whatever may be the sequence of initiation, all these four foundational fantastic drugs should be on board depending on the subset of patients. And this is decided by the blood pressure, by the EGFR, by the potassium and heart rate. So sequencing may be different, but all four drugs should be on board within a period of four to six weeks. And polypharmacy is the rule in HEPREP and the patient and family must be motivated right from the beginning. Escalation and escalation should be the goal in HEPREP because diabetic heart failure, survival five is only 15%, non-diabetic is 15%. So even if the patient is less symptomatic, one should not de-escalate the therapy. And DAPA can be used across the spectrum, cardiorenal spectrum, stage A heart failure, it decreases these three risk factors, Stage B, stage C, it decreases hospitalization for heart failure, cardiovascular mortality, all cause mortality. Uh, three point maze was also shown to be decreased, and their progression of kidney diseases slowed down. And if you use all these four drugs in a 55 year individual, you can increase the projective survival by 6.3 years. It has been approved by various professional bodies, the HFA ESC, the Canadian guidelines. Now, what are the renal benefits? The peculiar benefits in the kidneys are that it slows down the trajectory of CKD by slowing decline in the DGFR, postpones dialysis by 10 to 15 years, decreases hospitalization for heart failure and CV mortality and all cause mortality. All of us know uh, normally EGFR is 0.9 ml per minute per year. When CKD sets in, it falls down to 10 ml. And when RAS blockers and SGLT2 inhibitors were not available, most of these patients were subjected to dialysis within a short spell of time. But the first revolution came with RAS blocker in 2005, and it slowed down the decrease in EGFR from 10 to 4.59, which was a great achievement. The second revolution came with SGLT2 inhibitors in 2015, and this further slowed down the decline EGFR by another 58%, shifting EGFR decline from 4.59 to 1.85. And this gave a good opportunity for CKD in diabetic and non-diabetic patients as shown in CKD, which I will be discussing. And the third revolution is now with non-steroidal MRAs, uh, the Fidelio trial has shown improved cardiorenal outcomes. And this is fascinating is if you use a GLT2 inhibitors on top of RAS, you can postpone dialysis by 15 years. And this is a very, indeed, a great achievement for CKD patients. The renal benefits are seen whether you are looking at the cardiovascular outcome trials, that is the Amperage, the Canvas, or the Clear, or you are looking at HEPREP trials, the DAPA-HF and the Emperor, 
or you are looking at the dedicated CKD trial, that is the credence and the DAPA CKD. And this is the famous DAPA CKD. Uh, DAPA 10 milligram was compared with standard of care uh, CKD patients 25 to less than 75 EGFR and UACR more than 200 to less than 500. And you can see the composite cardiorenal endpoint decreased by 39%. The curve starts separating uh, in seven to eight months. The renal endpoints are 34 uh, percent reduction, and most of the CKD patients die because of cardiovascular event. So cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure is also decreased. All cause mortality was also decreased, and this shows that uh, DAPA has shown reduction in the composite cardiorenal endpoint, the renal endpoint, the all cause mortality, and the CV mortality. So in summary, DAPA has completed the whole circle. Declare trial is with primary and secondary prevention. DAPA is in half prep and DAPA CKD in non-diabetic as well as in diabetic CKD. So the big message for the cardiorenal metabolic continuum is that SGLT2 inhibitors is a panacea for improving cardiorenal metabolic continuum. They've initiated dawn of a new era for improving cardiorenal metabolic health. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Manoria. That's very, very good lecture and uh, educative. We are running short of time. Dr. Amal Khan, uh, Dr. Amal Khan, uh, nice to see you after a long time. Nice yeah. to see you. Okay. And, and still in action. <laughs> so we, we are we are we are led by about 30, 35 minutes. Just and our just one comment. Uh, Dr. Majumdar, you just take one up. Comment. Uh, thanks, Dr. Uh, Professor Manadia for excellent talk and giving all aspects of cardiovascular and renal benefit. So one recently published trial in the SEC has shown SOTA glycosine, that is SGLT type 1 and type 2 inhibitors, reduction of heart failure in all ranges, starting from heart failure with residues ejection faction to heart failure with PGAB ejection faction. So DAPA heart failure with PGAB ejection faction is going on. We are probably we will probably get some positive results. So some form of management in patient with heart failure of with PGAB ejection may also come from this molecule also. Uh, both these trials have passed on three big messages. The message number one was that sotaglifosin, when it was initiated in ADHF patients after hemodynamic stabilization, two days prior to discharge or prior to discharge or two days after discharge, there was significant improvement in the CV outcome in terms of hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death. The second big message that you said, improvement was seen in HEP-PEP patient. And this is indeed a great exciting news. And the third thing that MI and CK, MI and CBA was also reduced in the score trial, which is usually not the story of SGL. So atherosclerotic events were all so reduced. So both these trials showed uh, three new data. And I think in times to come, just as RD got approved for ADHF, the EMPA and the other uh, SGLT2 inhibitors, the trials are ongoing. They may also be utilized in ADHF after hemodynamic stabilization. Thank you, sir. Thank you for excellent talk.